All right, John chapter 12. John 12, look at verse 8. The poor, the Bible says, John 12, verse 8. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. So you know what we're going to always have until the Lord comes back? Poor people. Poor people. And you know what we're supposed to do to poor people? Be a blessing to them. You need to look to be a blessing to the poor. Look to be a blessing to them. And see what you can do to help them. Amen. And uh, so the church needs to be a blessing to the poor people. Verse number nine. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. And so they come not only to see uh, uh, Jesus, but they also come to see Lazarus. They come to the house to see Lazarus. You know what? You ought to have such a testimony that some people will come to church just to see what's happened, how this happened to them. <laughs> Who is this bloke Jesus? What is, what's this Bible preaching all about? What's this church all about? You need to have a testimony where people think, man, there's life in that man. There's life in that woman. And they want to come and see where you got it from. Amen. Guess what you need to have, man? So they come and say, verse number 10, but the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. You start getting right with God and have life, you know what's going to happen? They're not going to put Jesus Christ to death. They're going to put you to death. Mm. All right, now, so they went to kill him. And you know what? You're going to get persecution when you start living right for God. You just need to expect it. Now, verse number 11. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. So why did many believe on Jesus? Because of Lazarus. Wouldn't it be a blessing when we get to heaven that many people, you get to see it in your rewards, and many people believed on me, Jesus Christ, believed on Jesus Christ, because of you. Wouldn't that be great? Your testimony is important. Yeah. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse number uh, 12 again. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, uh, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Now, how did they hear that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem? So they're talking about it. You know, do you believe Jesus Christ is coming? Do you believe he's coming? Yeah. You got to talk about it, Amen. You need to tell people that Jesus Christ, number one, has already come. But number two, he's also coming. Amen. And people will not know unless you tell them. Right. If you don't tell them, they're not going to know about Jesus. Yep. People do not know about the Lord and the truth about the Lord unless people tell them. You've got to tell them. You've got to not only with your life, but also with your words. So I believe in lifestyle evangelism, they call it. But that's not where it stops. Right. You've got to also be a lips. You've got to tell them. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So tell them, amen. And so they heard about Jesus and they said, we're going to go to this thing. And look at verse number 13. Verse number 12 again. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees. This is where we get the idea of Palm Sunday. This is where it comes from right here. They took palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Come, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. Now, I'm going to tell you something about that ass's coat. The Bible says it, it, it was a young ass coat, never been ridden. Never been ridden. You know the Bible talks about man that's lost? Like a wild ass. Right. The Bible talks about man, he's like a wild ass if he's lost. If you're not born again, you're not saved, the Bible likens you to a wild ass. Yeah. What's that mean? You're stubborn. You're mule-headed. You're going to go your own way. Go your own way. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're going to do. You, and, and nobody's going to tell you what to do. I don't need that religion. I don't need that Bible. I don't need God. I don't need that preacher yelling at me. I don't need this. I don't need that. Nobody's going to tell you. You're like an ass. Yeah. Nobody can control you. You're uncontrollable. You're going to go sow your wild oats without the Lord. But you know what Jesus does? Jesus can take a wild ass and he can tame them. And when Jesus Christ is on that ass, now God can use him to bring glory to him. Amen. 
And that's what God does to you. You're saved. God, now, God's going to take, if you're saved, born again, He'll take and He'll tame you. No man can tame you, but Jesus Christ can tame you. Amen. And he'll, he'll control you. And then next thing you know, people are shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the King that cometh. Because you're carrying Jesus Christ to the world. You're telling the world about Jesus, carrying Him into the city. Somebody's got to carry Him in. You be that ass for God's glory. Amen. Amen. You be that ass for God's glory. And it goes on, verse number, verse number 12, 14. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass at their own, is it written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remember they that these things are written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. Now let me tell you something. Sometimes God shows you something and does something. You don't understand it. Hang in there. Stay faithful. Later on, you're going to understand. Amen. Jesus Christ just got through fulfilling the scriptures. They didn't understand it. They didn't know it. And that's why they wound up getting discouraged, by the way, because they didn't understand the scriptures properly. But nonetheless, hang in there. You're going to understand by and by. There's a, Bible, there's a song we sing that says talks about that. You'll understand it by and by. Hang on in there. Hang on. Hang in. Hang in. And we don't all understand everything at first. That's all right. Verse 17. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of, his, out, of the, out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. Verse 18. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevailed nothing? <laughs> Behold, the world is gone after him. <laughs> They just had they're having a powwow together, and they're saying, "Look, we haven't done anything. We're nothing's working. Everybody's worshiping him." <laughs> Praise God! You know what? Uh, they couldn't stop him. Amen. <laughs> they couldn't stop the Lord Jesus, and, and yet God's going to use them, even when they think they're stopping him. <laughs> Isn't this great? They perceive nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him, and of course, the world hadn't gone after him yet. They they had they had stretched things a little bit. Verse 20, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same therefore came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. So it's them traveled all the way to the Greeks. Yeah. Even before Paul the Apostle. It's made its way from Jerusalem, and now the Greeks have heard about it, and they've come there to Jerusalem, and they find out, Philip, hey, Philip, we would see Jesus. We want to see him. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, how many of you want to see Jesus? Amen. I want to see Jesus, amen. I want to see him, amen. And, and they come to Philip and says, we would see Jesus. Now, look how Jesus Christ answers to him, okay? And they came to see us, verse number 22, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. Well, why didn't you just go straight to Jesus about it? Well, these are Greeks. Jesus is a Jew, and they're Jews, and, and they're circumcised, and the Greeks are uncircumcised. <laughs> he didn't do it. He goes and tells Andrew, he says, Mate, listen, what are we going to do about this? Let's go, let's talk to each other. And then they said, verse number 22, Philip comes and tells Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus, There's somebody wants to see you, Jesus. <laughs> verse number 23 and Jesus asked them saying the hour is come the son of man should be glorified verily verily I say unto you except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit and then before I go any further he's talking about of course he's talking about number one himself He's saying, listen, it's time for me to die. There's people wanting me. They want to see me. It's time for me to die, shed my blood, so these people can see who I really am, the Savior of the world, amen. amen. It's time for these Gentiles to get saved, amen. It's time for these Greeks to come and believe in the Lord. They want me now. It's time to die right now. Amen. So that I would not bear alone. Jesus Christ is going to fall to the ground. He's going to die. And if he dies, he brings forth fruit. Amen. But not just fruit. 
much fruit. Here we are 2,000 some odd years later and he's bringing forth fruit. Amen. amen. Glory be to God because some Gentiles want to see Jesus. Amen. How many of you have been saved in the last year? Just think about it. They don't answer your hands. They don't raise your hands. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ died for you? Amen. That you might see him. You don't have to go to the Jew to see him. Amen. You don't have to go to the temple to see him. Amen. You don't have to go to a certain feast to see him. Amen. Right. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. He's talking about his death there, amen. amen. And he's drawing all men that you might see him, amen. Yeah. You don't have to wait for a dream, a vision. You can see him because he's already died and shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. Amen. He's rose in the grave. And whosoever will can see him, amen. amen. You can see him. But I'll tell you something else. If, well, not only do you want to get saved, but he teaches us something even deeper here. Verse number 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father say. I'll tell you something. So he was about to die so that people could see him, who he really is. But he also says, I got another message to keep on telling the people. Listen, if you want to see me work in your life, see me do something great in your life, then you need to follow me. And you know what that means? You're going to have to die. Die to yourself. Lose your life. You want to see me working? Some of you think, well, I'm not seeing God work. I'm not seeing God move. Number one, maybe your eyes aren't open. But number two, maybe you're still living so much for your life. And that's the problem. God wants to work. God wants to move. God desires to do something special. He wants to show up in your life and do something special. But you've got to die. You've got to lose your life. That you can find your life. But everybody in this day is trying to find their life. He says you've got to lose it. If any man, verse 26, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am... There shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father. What does it say? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? He says, you want to follow, follow me? You're going to be my servant? You're going to have to follow me. You know where Jesus Christ is headed, don't you? To a cross. He's headed to a cross. You want to be my servant? Then follow me. I'm going to a cross. Follow me. That's where you're going to find me right there. And that's the first place you've got to go to be saved, by the way, yeah. to the cross. And then you're going to have to die to yourself and follow him. And if you do that, your, his father will honor you. Amen. He'll honor you. You know the honor with you, the, when the greatest honor is? His presence. Yes, Amen. It's his presence. It's his presence. I'd rather have Jesus. Somebody sing it for me, I don't know. Silver or gold. I'd rather have him than have riches untold. Wouldn't you rather have Jesus? <laughs> his presence is worth more than all the world. His meeting with us is worth more than, than anything we could ever imagine. There's nothing greater than having God with us. And God moving in our lives and God moving in our church. We need Jesus. We need Jesus.